In this Dragon's Dogma 2 video, we're going to be talking about the Magic Archer class. We're going to be talking about how to get it, what role it fulfills in the group, what pawns are good with it, the basics of playing it, what skills to use, what equipment to use, and also how to manage your stamina. So if you've been trying to play a Magic Archer, been wondering where to get it, watch on for some useful information. So firstly, let's talk about how to get the Magic Archer vocation. In order to get it, you need to go to the Windwalker's home, which is quite a way south on the map and you need to be able to get through the gate at checkpoint rest town which can take you a little while and you can either beeline it down there or you can go through the natural progression of the game the natural progression of the game is going to make it take way longer you could just make for it if you want but if you're playing naturally it's going to take you quite a while to get it once you're down there you're going to need to complete a quest and once you complete that quest you'll have access to this vocation so the role of the magic archer in the group can be set up two ways you can either just go pure dps and just set up to just do as much damage as possible or you can be set up with some healing and support skills that can revive your pawns etc this kind of allows you to play somewhere between dps and support and you could theoretically remove your mage from the group and replace the mage if you plan on healing your party or you can just go the full dps route and there might be some reasons why you want to do that or not I would probably recommend not removing your mage even if you decide to have a heal skill or two on there because mages can also clear status ailments, which is something magic archers cannot do. But regardless of whether you play pure DPS or kind of hybrid support DPS, you'll probably want to have a tank as your main pawn in order to make sure they have aggro and they're keeping things off you where you can heal and attack. That way, if they're like on the enemy that you're firing at, you can also fire like a heal arrow in there etc that's probably a pretty good pairing or you could take a mage and make that one and you know ditch the hybrid and just go pure dps as well so let's talk about magic archer basics magic archers operate a little bit differently than archers however they do have some things in common for instance they can both just attack with the square button or the x button depending on your controller without aiming and then both of them can aim using the right bumper or r1 button depending on your controller so they can both do that, but primarily when you're playing a magic archer, you're going to be aiming more often than not, and there are a couple reasons for that. First of all, you're going to want to use pinpoint volley or rivet shot when you're aiming, and what this allows you to do is spread your arrows around more or focus on one specific thing. And there are scenarios where pinpoint volley is better, and there are scenarios where rivet shot is better, but I will say, generally speaking, that you'll probably use rivet shot more than pinpoint volley. Rivet Shot allows you to focus in on like a single target or a single enemy quickly or a single part of a big enemy more quickly than Pinpoint Volley does. Because the idea behind the Magic Archer is that you're going to want to hold your button down until all the little marks fill up on your circle and then let it fly. And if you let it fly right when that happens, as you level up your Magic Archer, that will do more damage. So that's kind of the concept there. And as you, again, level up your Magic Archer, you'll be able to fire more arrows while you make that shot. Now, if you use pinpoint volley, it takes longer to charge up on a single target than it does if you use rivet shot. However, if you're targeting a big enemy and you're far away, it will target each part of it that it can target, allowing you to fill up even more quickly. So when you're fighting huge targets, it can kind of behoove you to spread out your shots around on a big target and hit them more quickly than using riveting shot. The exception is, of course, if you want to hit their weak spot like the head or the chest on a dragon or something. You might want to use rivet shot for that like maybe they get knocked down and now you want to just focus on the head and deal as much damage to them as you can so that's kind of the thing you can also use pinpoint volley when there are a lot of enemies but i just find it's better probably to pick off enemies with rivet shot one at a time than just spread your damage around and not really kill one thing as quickly and i find i just don't use quick fire hardly at all in the magic archer i like aiming at specific parts and because status effects are kind of a big part of the magic archer it's just kind of easier to like target that way I find, but you can use quick fire if you want. So the other thing is again that debilitations or status ailments play a huge role in playing a magic archer. You have many skills that can set these. I'm using a bow in this video you're probably seeing that has frost buildup on it or frostbite on it. It's allowing me to freeze enemies and there's actually a passive skill that uh, magic archers get eventually that makes it so that when they, you know, use their regular attacks after using a skill, the damage type for the next, you know, few attacks or a couple of seconds after using a skill will change the damage of their basic attacks to that whatever type of damage their last skill was so like if an enemy is weak to fire for instance and you use a fire skill and then your regular attacks do fire you're going to do more damage or something like that so you want to keep that in mind and try and lean into that when you know the weakness of an enemy type and i do want to mention unlike the archer class you do not need arrows for some of the special attacks for this if it sounded like you did you don't the archer needs some specific arrows for some specific skills. The magic archer does not. You do not need arrows on the magic archer. 
So let's quickly talk about stamina management on the Magic Archer. Again, just like the Archer, it's not very difficult to do because you end up doing just regular attacks a lot of the time and those don't consume stamina. And you do use some skills, but it's, sometimes it's just faster to fire off a regular shot. So you, you're you usually using a lot of your stamina to like dodge attacks by sprinting somewhere quickly to get out of the way. Or, you know, if you're firing off like back-to-back -back special arrows to lead off a fight, but then you're generally just using your regular attacks a lot as well. Um, things you also you can do is make sure you're lightweight so that your stamina recovery is better. Use consumables if you need and, you know, just don't overextend yourself using too many skills. It shouldn't be a problem on Magic Archer. Just make sure. So let's talk about skills that I like on Magic Archer. The first one is Candescent Orb. This is the upgraded version of this, but this effectively shoots out an orb into an area that does like fire damage over time to enemies in the area. It doesn't have a super long range. It will not go as far as you think it will. But it will stick up in the air, so you can shoot it up into the air and it'll stick stick there. Or you can stick it onto an enemy, you can stick it on the ground, etc. And I find that's a really good lead-off skill to just get some damage down into an AoE or into a big enemy while you start attacking them with regular attacks. The next one I want to mention is Frost Secret Bolt. This is good if you want to play sort of like a Ice Archer, you want to build up Frostbite on enemies and like freeze them. I don't really need that with the bow that I'm using, which is why you won't see it too much in my footage. But if you don't have that bow and you really like the frost effect, which you might see frequently in this video, you can use Frost Secret Bolt to get something similar. It's just obviously a little bit more difficult because you have to keep queuing up that skill, whereas my regular attacks with this bow just keep freezing. The next skill that I really love is Ricochet Secret. This is a skill that deals lightning damage, and it really only works well like inside tight spaces. But what it does is it allows you to like charge up a shot for a few seconds and then let it go. The longer you charge it before you lose the air, the more ricochets will happen. And then it'll ricochet around off walls and ceilings, hitting enemies over and over. It can deal tons of damage, but again, very situational, and it really only works in tight spaces. So like if you're out on the landscape in a wide open area, it's not going to work real well. Another really fun skill is Flame Fang Arrow. This is sort of like a guided arrow that you can use that explodes. I don't know how long you can guide it around for. It seems like it's a very long time in my testing, but you can sort of guide it over hills and around corners and stuff. And then it'll explode for fire damage and leaves fire on the ground for a while where you go. This is just a really nice skill to have. It's not a must-have skill by any means, but it's a really fun one to play with. And another skill that I want to mention is Hailstone Bolt. What this skill does is the longer that you hold it, it charges up a bigger and bigger block of ice and then kind of flings it at the enemy. And this skill has a decent amount of knockdown power to it. So if you like playing in a group where you're trying to knock down a monster or something, like maybe you're playing with a warrior and they knock them off balance and then you hit them with this, you can knock them down if you like hit a Cyclops in the head or something. It's really nice. And the other thing is, I'm reasonably sure that this skill does physical damage because I think it's the block of ice just hitting something, which you know would be a physical force hitting them, um, which gives the Magic Archer potentially a physical damage option if that's the case for enemies that are resistant to like magic damage, like golems or something like that. So you might want to keep it for those instances as well. And we'll also talk a little bit about Martyr's Bolt here. Martyr's Bolt is like the special skill that you get from the Master. Um, when you get the vocation, you also get this skill. This thing does absolute insane damage, but it will reduce your max health by a lot when you use it or by basically as much as you hold down before letting go. And that will increase the damage, but it'll also take your health, which is why it's called Martyr's Bolt. I would not recommend using this regularly because you'll have to go rest basically every time after you use it. I would simply use it in like really tough fights to finish it off. You know, if you got a, a boss that's tough, like low, and you think you can finish him off with one shot, that's when I would use it. But otherwise, I wouldn't recommend using it regularly. So that brings us to Recovery Arrow, which can be used to revive your pawns from a distance and also heal your pawns. And if you're going to be playing that hybrid build I sort of mentioned earlier, you're going to want this one on your bar probably just because of the revives alone. Being able to revive at range is huge. Reviving your pawns can get you killed in a really bad situation of like two or three pawns down. You just don't have time. The enemy's on you. Use recovery arrow to get your pawns up can be very, very vital. And also just being able to heal them as well. So if you're playing that hybrid, you're going to want this one. And then you also have Vim taking arrow, which you might want to consider if you're playing hybrid. What this does is steals health from enemies and gives it to your pawns. So like if you AoE a bunch of enemies with it, like it'll take their health and give it to them. And so it can be kind of like an AoE heal. I think it's really, really situational, though, compared to Recovery Arrow and the fact that it can't revive. I think that makes Recovery Arrow a bit better. You could still have both of these on your bar if you want, or slot it on your skills if you want. But uh, I think Recovery Arrow is probably the better of the two. So then we come to Augments. Really what you want in Augments is just anything that's going to boost your damage, like your magic stat, 
stamina recovery is good or extra stamina, but there's also status effect buildup. I think Sorcerer has one. It's either Sorcerer Mage that has a status effect buildup augment that's really good because you're trying to build up status effects as a magic archer a lot. And then just really anything that's going to, you know, improve your damage in some way is what you're looking for. And then when it comes to equipment, for rings, you're just going to want to try and increase your magic or something that increases strength and magic. And then, you know, there's ones that increase like your bow attacks, like from close range. Something like that is good. And obviously what bow you can use is dependent on where you are in the game. I'm using the ice bow. Really love that it freezes enemies. I find that even though there are bows out there with more damage than it, because enemies just can't hit me like it's at, or my party, it's really, really valuable. So I consider getting that one as well. So that wraps up our video on Magic Archer. This is probably my favorite class overall. It's a fan favorite. A lot of people love this from the original game as well. And I really love that you can just take one skill, put a heal on there to give you some extra healing or revive if you need it. I think that's going to come in very, very handy at end game for a lot of people. And as always, if you have tips I forgot to mention, make sure you mention them in the comments or if you have questions, leave them there and I will try and answer them as soon as I can. Oh, 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 oh,